What we are working with here today is a Rice Vister faucet. Okay, you excuse the mess, but what we are doing is we are taking out. Hold on one second. Hold on. Get a light here. This will help, but we'll see. <laughs> taking the sink apart, taking the lines off, hot and cold lines. They are held on with clips, retaining clips. Um, I don't know where the retaining clips are at the moment. I just seen them. Uh, here somewhere but anyway there's little retaining clips that hold on the sink oh here they are right here these little retaining clips hold the sink excuse me sorry for all the movement these retaining clips here you can see Hold on this sink right here. You can see the slots where the retaining clips go to, go through. Clip on and they hold on up here. There's three, just remove those, take those off. You do not have to take that nut off of the uh, bottom there. You can leave that threaded on, okay? You can also leave on your soap dish dispenser. Uh, okay, you have to take off your sprayer hose attachment, which is over. Here is the part that goes up through the top half of the sink. There's a little plastic clip, and I'll show you later, that fits onto that end. Um, you also have this here. That is actually goes on to the blue. It's your sprayer attachment. The weight. It has the weight on it down here. You can see that little weight right there. But anyway, that goes on to the little blue. That's your sprayer. Uh, your hot is the long one with the little piece of tape on and your cold is up there. So that's how you can tell. Uh, like I said, okay. And then when we go up top half, on up top we have your faucet we have all of your parts to your faucet we have the little retaining clip that holds on your sprayer hose which is the part I showed you down here the part that clicks on to this piece here hold on sorry clicks on the this piece here this little ring Sorry for the dirty fingernails. It's just been working on this thing. It gets dirty. But this piece snaps onto that ring. But it only snaps on after you replace these parts on here. This part. This part here sits in. Then the tip comes through the hole here. This goes on down inside of there. And then the clip goes on to hold all of that in. You'll see when you take yours apart, you'll see all of that when you take it apart. That's the water valve for your hot and cold. It's all been taken apart. Sorry you didn't get to see it taken apart, but there's a little pop-in clip that covers where your Allen screw is to take off your handle. There's the sprayer handle. As you can see, it's off. And it pulls off from out of here when you have your sprayer hose come out. Your hose comes out of there, so forth. Your sprayer hose. And it comes through that hole. And you have to wiggle and get that hose off there. But once you get everything off, wiggle this back and forth. It'll be tight because if you have the problem with it, it'll be tight. Just wiggle it back and forth and work your way up. Pull it up off. 
and you will have what you see inside a bunch of corroded corroded material hell gotta try and focus here <clears throat> bunch of corrosion back in there so anyway that's down the nozzle and then on the top you can see how corroded it is okay but anyway and that's what you have left now you'll have two rubber rings here as you can see my rubber ring here it's oblonged it's all worn out stretched out out of shape take these rubber rings off it's one there's another one on here you might use a need to use a knife or something to get back in here take that rubber ring off once you get your rubber rings off discard throw to the side however you want to do what I went to is a local hardware store and I just grabbed a couple O rings. Uh, I don't know if that's the correct diameter you need, but that's what I went with. And I won't know until I get it on. I, I picked two. Um, hold on a second. I picked two and the reason because one's a little thicker than the other. If you can see in the picture, that's the thicker of the two. And then you have this one here. But there's the old two rings. But I bought two of the others just so if the one doesn't work, I'll be able to use the bigger rings in there. But that's just extra. But as it stands right now, we've got the two rings here, the new ones taken out of the pack already. And I just throw them over and replace. I clean this off with some, uh, just a paper towel. I wiped a bunch of this gunk off of here and kind of wiped it clean. Now you might use some emery cloth or something to go around here or some white sandpaper or steel wool or whatever you want to use to get this off. Just clean it up a little bit, get all the dead old, all the old oil and grease off of it. You can see this rag, it's like I said, it's a dirty mess getting this stuff up, it's just dirty. But you run into that. Um, taking the faucet off, like I said, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of complicated, but then it's not really. Okay, I'm put all this on just for temporary, just to show you, give you an idea what all, how it goes. Okay, there's things down inside of there, if you look. Okay, you have your, so forth, put your valve in. I think there's two little tits at the top, two little tips. Um, hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get it in focus. I got two little tips. The tops. You can see the tips there. Okay. Then you can put those tips up towards the top. And they should drop down in some little grooves in there and you feel them lock in. Well, then you have your ring here. That, well, you have this little brass ring first and it's notched on two sides this brass ring is you can see the notch on that side there where my thumb is this side and there's a notch on the other side so you can put a crescent wrench around that or something and loosen it but it threads on like so okay it screws down and then the other one is this one fits on top so when you take it apart, it's, just, it's not that complicated. You just want to probably put some rubber or something around this when you take this ring off because this ring, you can dull it, mar it up, or even get like uh, scratches on it if you just use a pair of pliers on it. Let me try and get this in focus. But anyway, when you take that off, you know, it goes on, comes off the same way. Uh, then, you, like I said, you take the brass thread out. It's easy for me because um, it's already been done. I was just trying to show you how to take it off and then so forth. But you start with the Allen screw in this handle. That's where you'll start because it'll be sitting up here like this. You'll put in the Allen screw. Well, you'll pop off the little cover, take the Allen screw, put the Allen screw in there, back that out, pull it off, and then you'll be left with your, be left with your valve and everything else, and you'll take all of that out.
okay but then like i said you clean it up real good and once you get it all cleaned up i still got to do some more cleaning i'll get back with the video once i clean it a little more i'm going to take uh take an uh sandpaper or i might get a dremel run a dremel up in there a wire brush a little wire dremel and get all that calcium deposit off of that thing down inside of there and that might help a little bit then i'm going to take some uh some here i got some do it best hardware lithium grease silicone grease i mean i'm gonna put some silicone grease on there i'm using i'm going to probably put the silicone grease on the um on the rubber both of these silicone grease around those two the two new washers or o-rings i'm sorry and the o-rings will go into this little groove one and in the bottom there'll be a little groove here now there's a little nylon washer down here at the very bottom it, you don't really have to mess with it i didn't see anything that needed to be worked fixed or changed on it i just leave it sitting there um and your hose will come down through here it might be a little tricky getting that hose out this is the hose that actually comes to your sprayer nozzle which is here and it screws onto that threads onto here it might be a little tricky getting that out of there but uh you know getting it out of this part but you wiggle it around and play around with it you'll be able to pull it out of there um, like I said, make sure you take off the uh, metal parts that are attached to that little nylon, the, the hose that comes out of there. Make sure you get this off. And then, like I said, all these parts here. Here's the other couple parts that were in there. Those three. Okay. Um, and like I said, once you put some, I'll put some grease around this whole ring here. Put some grease around this ring here. Put the rubber washer on. Um, maybe lubricate some grease around in here because I don't know what all is going to touch the grease. Um, I don't know what's in the back here, if there's anything or not. But um, like I said, I'll grease that up real good and then put it back, reassemble it, and uh, be back in action. But like I said, you don't have to take that center nut off the bottom underneath this. You don't have to take your plate off here if you're using just a single without the extra plate here you can still you know you just loosen the bottom plate it comes with an extra plate the price fister i never used it because our sink type is a three hole sink if you got a single hole sink you would have this part and that's the part you would have sitting down here in the place of this flat piece here you just have the single hole here for a single hole sink so i will be back and um, you can judge and decide if you want to try this or if not. But I didn't see any videos for Fister Price online, so I figured I would just do this model and hopefully we'll be successful. If it is, you will see the post. If not, you won't see this post. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay. And now we've got this cleaned up. I took some um, sandpaper, scraped around the side and cleaned it out the best I can. This little lip along the bottom I cleaned out. I don't know if you can see it. That rim there. Cleaned it out. Um, if you notice right in here, right there is where we have um where the actual um o-ring goes the bottom o-ring and there's an o-ring on the top it goes up in here i don't know if i should try and get all the gunk out of there or if i can get all the gunk out of there Guess I can take out what I can. That'll be less gunk to mess up my application unless I put in the uh, silicone. I was unable to get a Dremel, so 
So I'm going to scrape this off the best I can. Now I'm just using the knife flat and just rubbing it up against maybe get some of the deposits off if there's any lime or anything. hard water. This area we live in, there's a lot of hard water. So you run into that. The other thing you might want to do when you're working on this is to take um, take a piece of uh, plastic. I mean a piece of paper towel and place it inside the top of this thing up here in the copper down inside and i will show you place it down inside of here to protect you from dropping anything down inside of there it's always good to have something down in there to pretty much keep it uh I don't know, keep it from getting any kind of debris down inside. But uh, I think I've got it cleaned up about as best I can do right now. Um, there's some hard, hard water down here deposit. Calcium. And it's just gritty. You can feel it, you can watch it. You can probably see it flying off when I'm scraping around here. I mean, this hard water is horrible on your pipes. If you have a water softener in this area, you're fortunate or lucky because that's what tears up your pipes and your faucets and sinks and Anything that water runs through, this is really, really damaging. Shortens the life. So you're replacing your faucet every five to ten years. It's costing you hundreds of dollars in replacements and repairs. And if you had good soft water, well, it could last you 10, 20, or even longer years. Okay, so wipe this off. This uh, wipe the sink. Okay, We've got some spots back here. All this extra scale and line. Okay. So now comes the part where we place the rubber O-rings on. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my silicone, which we have here. Let's do the best hardware. I'm sure you got a local hardware store in your town. Silicone. how we apply this uh, that I don't know I don't know if this thing just slides off or twists off I think it just pulls off yeah the cap just pulls off and you have your silicone so okay what I'm going to be doing now is putting a little uh, silicone on it And I'm going to try and squeeze it in 
inside of here. Uh, little tub of silicone I have. Get it in there, spread it around. Also along the bottom here. Yep, just get as much as I can. Might have to use my finger to lather it in. Uh, it's working it all the way around. So when I put the um, O-ring in, should be able to ooze out and I don't know what parts touch. As far as this silicone, but I might just lather it all over in there. Just because I don't know where it's going to touch, what parts it's going to touch. And I don't think I'll get too much. The more the better, I'm assuming. Also going to place some on the top here. And around the uh, metal here, the brass. Put some around that brass. back in there and then I'm going to take the rings themselves and lube up the rings take the ring itself and lube the ring up a little bit of silicone around the ring place the first ring on I'm going to slide it all the way down to the bottom down on the bottom work it around get it inside like I said put this stuff all the way around okay let's take the second ring and lubricate it this stuff is very messy lubricate the second ring Place it on the top. Now I think that we've got them lubed on both. Now the only thing I'm going to do is also put some silicone inside of the actual part. Uh, inside of this part I'm going to put some silicone down inside there on the and down inside the hole there so that should make it slide on pretty easy the only thing is I think I'm going to have to pull the actual uh, piece from down below I'm going to have to pull the piece from down below here which uh have to see here. There's already water in there. I'm going to pull this piece and push it up through um, the hole. So let's see if we've got enough light to film this part. Okay, I'm going to lay in here. I've got these springs. I'll just throw that this here. And uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get it up and through there. Okay. I'm going to go up through the bottom there. Hopefully I can see that from above. be nice if it comes out and stays out, but I think it's not going to. Like I 
is going to stay. If I can get it to sit on something here. Now maybe I can go up top and pull it the rest of the way up. We'll see here. Yeah, it's still sticking up out of there. Okay, let's turn some light over here. Sink. Okay. All right. Let's set the camera here again. Won't have the best view, but I'm gonna give it, try to get the best view I can. You have to bear with me on this camera setup. Okay, now I'm gonna lube the inside ring. Inside there. Just a little bit. Inside here, I'm gonna lube. It's the rim. And down inside there, I'm gonna also lube. I don't know if you can see it back in there. From the front, you might be able to see it. If I can get my finger down in there. Okay, I'm gonna do this off camera. shove this up in afterwards maybe I don't know let's see if I can work with this on here I'll push it down on okay there we've got some kind of turn we've got grease oozing out from the bottom there silicone you can look along the bottom you can see where it's oozing out along the bottom, but that's okay. We're not worried about that. We'll try and push that hose up through. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see me push it up through, but we're gonna get it up through there. Hopefully we can work it up through. That also was not, it's gonna be a nightmare. out how to work that up through there uh, yeah I'll have to fish that let's just see I'll have to fish that out of there and I'll probably have to do that off camera I don't know if you can see it down inside the hole there oh boy it's blurry let's go with the focus here I don't know if you can see it in there or not uh, you might be able to see it in there now. Fish that out of there. And we'll be right back. So, stand by. Okay. Okay, we're back. What I did was I pulled that through and I was able to get it through. Uh, actually, what I did was took a, took a little sharp knife. When it was down inside of here, took a real sharp knife, stuck it down in that hole, and then reached around under the sink and guided it up through that center hole. So, yeah, there's a hole in the middle of that. Just guided it up through. Used that hole to hold on with a knife and pulled it up through. It worked anyway. Then I stuffed a piece of uh, paper towel down in there so that it won't drop back down and you can stuff anything in there just so it won't slide back down and while you're working on it but pretty much everything's done except putting the lines on putting the front clip on 
putting your sprayer on and all of your sprayer attachments. Yeah. And the, the lock, which locks onto the end of the sprayer there. And uh, that's a lock that keeps that, keeps this part on. But the the uh, connector that connects your, and then your rubber here, all of that goes on. Okay. And this rubber, this faces, this part with the little indentation on the outer ring, that faces the backside of your sprayer where the threads are. I will show you here in one second. Go right here. Sorry for the camera shaking this. But if you look at the back of this, that's your sprayer. You see that black outer thread? Okay, the hole in the center. And if you look, there's an indentation around. So you, that's how you know which way it goes in. You know that this indentation is going to sit back up against this part when you put it inside the actual, this part here. A little confusing, but if you know what I mean. In other words, if I set this this way, I pick it up and it would thread on this way. But if I set it down this way, this part goes up. The white part goes down. So if I were to set it down in there, the white part is down. It would set in there that way. And then it would screw on to here. But all that takes place once you get it connected to this, which there's some parts that you'll see. You can figure that much out. It's not too hard. So, old, bad O rings. I think we're almost done. Remember, like I said, this is a Price Fister. You can probably see the name there. Real faint P Fister. If I turn it a little bit, P Fister right there. Price Fister right there would be the name on your sprayer. And this model has the sprayer that's the little knob on the top, a uh, little notch in the bottom. Um, right here is the little notch. Can look little notch and the bottom of the sprayer corrodes. You can see all that all that deposit. It's really bad hard water here. But we will continue, and uh, you can watch. I guess you probably won't be able to see it all. Um, the angle that I'm going to be working on, you probably won't be able to see. But I'm going to try and do everything in front of the camera. I don't know how well the focus will be. But I'll try. I'll try and do the work in front of the camera. Okay, so we get this part on. Okay. Then we put this part on. Okay, this part. Okay. And then we put this on here. Pop it on, I guess, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, am I wrong? Huh. Uh, wait one second. I put this this way. Then once I get that in there, I put that on there. 
Let it go. Over. Under. All right, give me a second. Okay, we're back to recording. Um, with this part, it's just a matter of placing this through the ring, and then you have the little plastic retaining ring. This, you just snap it on there. Boom, easy as pie. You just snap it on, and you hear it snap, and it just locks in. I don't know if you can see it down in there. It's probably not good enough to see, but it snaps down in there. See it in there? Once it snaps on, you're good. It stays on, it stays on there. Then you place the big thick rubber side of this up, the white side down inside. So perfect example is the white side it's going to go down inside here, like so. Then it's just a matter of screwing on your sprayer. Just screw that on. Okay. And that should be complete as far as that is. Uh, be careful when you tighten your sprayer on. If you use pliers or anything, you'll mar up the you'll mar up the chrome finish. So you don't want to mar up that chrome. So you might want to put rubber around there or a towel or something where you can get a good grip on it without marring the surface. Um, and then I take the uh, that out, drops right in. Now when I turn it right to left moves a lot freer a lot freer definitely a big difference from where it used to be when it was real stiff and hard to turn I mean it used to be very stiff to turn this thing I'll take a picture here take a view back up but yeah I can I can basically turn it with one finger now and before you had to use two hands or one hand and get a real good grip to turn it so now it's it's lubed up down inside of there um, and it stays on there. So now it's just a matter of finishing up with tightening this up with a pair of pliers, channel locks. Um, I don't know if my crescent wrench was wide enough. You can put a crescent wrench on there if it's wide enough. Yes, it's wide enough. So I can put a crescent wrench on there and tighten that down. Just tighten it down. Move it out of the way because there's there's some flat edges on both sides if you get it on those flat edges you can just like I said you can turn this thing perfectly not on the threads there's flat edges to make sure you're on the flat edges and you don't want it too tight because you still have to you know be able to turn so you can take it back some just adjust it to where you can move freely as far as moving your water valves up and down and turn it right and left. That's what I say. You can, you can tighten it just enough to where you can work a little bit. I could probably give it another little turn. It's a tiny bit. Maybe right there. And that should be good as far as that turning. Yeah, still works fine. I could probably go a little more. Want a little more tension. Uh, right about there. And yeah, it still turns good. Up and down, up and down. Okay. Then the only thing left is go underneath. We're all pretty much done on the top. Like I said, when you screw this in, this is metal. So, you can hand tighten it. Usually you just hand tighten it. I think I marred it up a little bit from using pliers. I use channel locks on there. That's a no-no. I didn't squeeze real hard, but I did 
used these and marred it a little bit because those teeth. You don't want to use that, but that's okay. Um, next step would be to put the top on right here and then put the Allen wrench in there and then pop the cap on. Then you go underneath and if you set it up before, you know underneath you got your snap rings. You just get your hot and your cold right. Your hot and your cold and your See, I've got my snap rings. Here's one snap ring. I don't know where the other one is. I do have one here. There's two of them. And then your water lines inside of there will just pop up on there. You just figure out which one's hot, which one's cold. And the blue connects to the blue up under there. If you look up under there, you've got a blue right there. You got the one with the paper on it is your hot. And the one up top is your cold. And that's it. Once you hook those up, you're good to go. Uh, like I said, you don't have to loosen that nut when you, when you do this process, you don't have to loosen that at all. I did originally, I loosened that nut and I really didn't need to. Cause once you get everything off the top end, you just rock it back and forth and pull up on it and it'll pop right off. So, and you don't use loosen any of those. If you're doing the th three hole, you don't need to unloosen any of those. So everything can stay the same and you'll be done. So hope this helps. Good luck. Give me thumbs up if you think it was good. Give me a thumbs down if you think it was bad. But I tried my best to do this video. And hopefully someone else that has a, fist, a Price Fister uh, faucet, same model, can fix their issue of the tight, hard-to-turn Fister Price. So I'll talk to you later. I'll show you after it's complete. Now it's all put together. Easy, very smooth, very easy to turn. I can turn it with my pinky now. <laughs> yes, so a lot easier. I did run into one issue uh, when I was putting the lines back on underneath. I'll show you what I run into. I had a o-ring that snapped on me and broke so i have to replace this tomorrow i'll replace the o-ring which is nothing to do it's easy and then put the snap rings on underneath there's one snap ring left i'll let you see what i've got here just the one snap ring left and the o-ring is up there i turned on the hot water because i could wash some dishes if i turned the hot on so I just wanted to get the hot running so I could wash up some dishes that have been sitting in the sink for a couple of days. Uh, that one's on. That's the hot. Like I said, the hot has the tab. And you can see there where the O-ring, the bottom O-ring is gone. The top O-ring is there and the bottom O-ring is gone. The black O-ring on the bottom is gone. And then that top little spacer up there is where you put your snap ring pin or whatever you want to call it snap pin like that goes on the very top but that should be it that's all that's left everything else is bolted up tied up souped up and like i said i've got this down here just collecting the water for right now get the other o-ring i don't have any that small so once i replace that she'll be done and that's all there is to it so it's a pretty simple fix and uh good luck anybody that's gonna try it big difference i told you i used to have to have one hand or two hands to turn this and now it, it pretty much i mean you can you can see it's a lot easier to turn a lot easier yes so if you have a price fister that's how you do it
So, like I said, give me feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Doesn't really matter. Hope this helps anyone who's has the same issue I did with a hard to turn Price Fister faucet. And I will put the model number in the description of this. Still available. I think it's like 200 and some odd dollars. But it's still available to my knowledge. Um, but I'll put the in the description. I'll put the model number. And I'll probably put the model number on the title. Or I'll put the actual brand. Price Fister hard to turn water faucet. How to. All right. Hope it works. Bye-bye.